Hello wrestling fans of the world, uh, welcome to Ring Respect Radio and in particular our brand new show here today. This is Ring Respect Retro. I am the real Bobby Munson and with me is my esteemed colleague with Wildside TV. This is Papa Smokes joining the Ring Respect crew. Hey, how you doing Munson? Glad to be back on Ring Respect. And this is going to be fantastic. Ring Respect Retro is a brand new show that we're bringing to all of you. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use Papa Smoke's knowledge of uh, professional wrestling and we're going to take a little rewind in time. We're going to show you some classic wrestling matches here. We're going back to the 70s, the 80s, uh, possibly down the line the early 90s. And we're going to show you what wrestling used to be. And so you can get a little bit more history behind some of the superstars that led to what you see in the ring here today. And... Without further ado, we're going to get on to our first matchup. Uh, why don't you give a little bit of a background as we start this off uh, before we get going here, Papa Smokes. Yeah, the first one we're going to look at tonight is uh, Rip the Hustler Rogers versus Roddy Piper. This match is from 1981. It's from uh, Portland, Oregon in the uh, PNW, Pacific Northwest Wrestling uh, Territory. And uh, this is from a live show, and it's looking real good. We picked this match basically at random, and uh, and it's going to be a good one. So without further ado, why don't we head on down to ringside for Roddy Piper versus Rip Rogers. And we hope you've set your televisions to HD, folks, because this one is going to be of the highest quality. Only the best, straight from VHS. And uh, this is probably uh, got to be right towards the beginning of Roddy Piper's career, I would imagine. There, Papa Smokes. What about uh, Rip Rogers? Uh, when was his career starting? Oh, yeah, Rip probably around a couple more years than Piper at this point. But uh, both uh, young super or soon to be superstars in their primes. Uh, look at Rip there; he's got the classic. Uh, gimmick with the uh, bleach blonde hair he's also part of a uh, faction at this time uh, the promoter's name in in pnw was al tomko and he had a heel faction uh, called al tomko's army so escorting rip to the ring is a uh, playboy buddy rose and so we're getting underway right away just not going to have any hesitation rip rogers getting right in there and tearing into roddy piper immediately And Rip Rogers, uh, as we were talking uh, before this uh, episode went on the air here, Papa Smokes, uh, Rip Rogers famously, uh, maybe to more modern day fans, known for uh, being a trainer in OVW and working with the likes of John Cena, Batista, uh, Brock Lesnar, Randy Orton, uh, just to name some of the great superstars that have been trained by the great Rip Rogers. Yeah, yeah Rip Rogers uh, has been running that OVW training facility for a long time. He's... He's had some famous names come through there, and yeah, they, he's considered the best in the biz. This is why I like watching his old matches, too, is to look at him in development. You can see he's uh, he uses so much body language, uh, very expressive in his uh, facial features as well, and uh, just this matchup with Piper, too, is going to be explosive. Well, they got to be two of the most uh, charismatic and yet uh, you know, almost crazy characters of uh, the uh, definitely of the 80s when they were starting to make their breakout uh, Piper I mean a lot of fans even nowadays are going to be well adverse to his run with the uh, WWF or as it's called the WWE today but uh, maybe not knowing uh, about uh, young Roddy Piper prior to those days uh, working for Vince McMahon yeah, and Piper you know his we most fans know him as a heel in WWF run but uh, his He's a he, he's a face in this particular match, and uh, really the persona is quite the same as it ended up being later on in history. He's uh, just a little bit on the edge, uh, just a little bit crazy. We're going to see that in a couple minutes uh, once he gets the upper hand on the Rip Rogers. The one thing the fans might not be uh, well adverse to as they're watching this for the first time is just how intense wrestling used to be back in the 70s and 80s uh we we've uh, looked at quite a few matches ourselves i know you've been able to uh, experience a lot of them back in your day as well too i mean they they talk about the way wrestling is today but i mean these guys they didn't hold back at all as you can see roddy piper just going uh 
corner to corner here with Rip Rogers. And I mean, this has not been a slow paced match right from the time of the opening bell. Oh, and look at this crowd too, Munson. I mean, all through this match, watch the crowd in the background. Like they are fully invested in the action that's going on here. And, uh, you know, you can, you can look at various reasons for why it might not be as electric anymore. But I, I think really the, the business changed with the advent of the internet. A lot of stuff's watered down now. There's a couple of cats that have come out of a couple of bags, so to speak. And uh, I just love this uh, golden age in the 70s and 80s for uh, the fans' enthusiasm was, was different and, and awesome. Uh, how much more difficult was it to find the wrestling that you liked uh, back then, too? I mean, I know uh, uh, for myself, uh, when I was younger, I mean, we were limited to whatever was available on the cable television package that we had, uh, that being in the uh, late 80s, early 90s. So, I mean, we were really limited to what was on WWF or even WCW at the time. But uh, we weren't privy to the Territory Days, the NWA, anything like that. I mean, how difficult was it for you growing up to... Uh, get to see what you wanted in professional wrestling no extremely difficult uh, uh that was the drawback of that time is that you really couldn't watch all the matches you wanted to um uh, my brothers and i followed in the the magazines as we talked about on ring respect radio some months back uh we we followed uh, in, in the in the magazines like pro wrestling illustrated and inside wrestling that was that was really the only way you could and, and Sometimes uh, once Cable came on, we got uh, some Lucha Libre wrestling and stuff like that too, but uh, basically, yeah, it was difficult. Now I can go back and watch anything I want. Which has uh, been one of the luxuries and great things of the internet nowadays is being able to decide what you want to watch in professional wrestling. You can go back and watch the classics like we are here today. You can enjoy the new stuff as well too. But it's nice to, to really take a look at this and see where it all came from. You know, what uh, got the businesses to where they are today and everything. And looking at these guys and how much, you know, even the modern superstars of today are, are borrowing from the movesets of guys like Roddy Piper and Rip Rogers. Yeah, very much so. Uh, Piper's getting it going in this match now, quite enjoying this. Uh, he's, he's now uh, breaking some of the same rules that uh, Rip was breaking before, and now we got a good exchange going on. Now, one interesting point here, too, that referee is uh, Sandy Barr. He used to be a wrestler, um, quite a, you might say, a full-time jobber for this Pacific Northwest wrestling, but uh, also used as a ref, and then eventually ended up buying a chunk of the company uh, some years later. So uh, Sandy hung in there pretty good. And never underestimate the referees when it comes to wrestling these days, or even back then. You see Rip Rogers now firmly back in control of this matchup, but uh, Roddy Piper had a you know a fiery run there. He was uh, taking control of things, and now Rip Rogers throwing it right back at him. I like the way Rip uh, uses Piper's own body to shield the referee, and then gives him the the uh, hand thrust to the throat, uh, unable to be seen by the referee. It's really classic rule breaking there. You see Rip Rogers heading to the top rope here, and that's got uh, quite. Quite, quite the drop to the outside of the ring. Yeah, you must know uh, Randy Savage would have been watching that at this time, maybe. You see, too, uh, with this particular arena, there is no padded mats on the outside of this uh, ring here, right down to the cement po floor. Oh, this is a really good match. Uh, just when I thought Piper was going to go on a tear, rips back in control. Oh, and there it is, the sleeper. And Piper still used that in his later years, too, as a finisher, the sleeper. I almost feel like the sleeper is one of those moves in wrestling that's kind of gone by the wayside and not uh, used quite as much as it should be. And there you have oh, it. Rogers with the cheap shot and the win. Oh, definitely definitely not a whole lot of ring respect as I try to preach yeah, going on there, but uh, Rip Rogers did everything he could to take the win over young Roddy Piper, and that's all she wrote there, Papa Smokes. Some of these old matches, I like the way the fans run up to the ring, too. It's different than nowadays. I'm not trying to encourage that, but uh, just the intimacy of some of these house shows, uh, having some interaction with Piper there is... It's got a good feeling to it. 
Well, the thing is, too, at this point, kayfabe was still very much alive. So, I mean, these people felt bad for Roddy Piper. They absolutely hated Rip Rogers for what he had just pulled off there. And you believed that it was legitimate back then. I mean, you believed these two slugged it out and that they absolutely hated one another when they went back to the locker room. And they were explaining to the ref what actually happened behind his back with, with great urgency. It's a golden time. Oh, well, that was a uh, wonderful match and a wonderful start here to Ring Respect Retro. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we are going to be bringing you as many episodes as we can, so stay tuned for more episodes of the show. Thank you for joining us here on Ring Respect Retro here today. Uh, anything else to add there, Pop Smokes, before we take off? No, I really enjoy doing this, though. Everybody that's listening, thanks a lot for being here, and uh, tune in next time. We got more of that where that came from. And definitely don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you know when we release any new content on Ring Respect Radio or for Ring Respect Retro as well. Till next time, have a good night.